everyone, and welcome to this live workshop on wiring LEDs. We are not just going to wire one LED because unlike a lot of things in life, less is not always more. And that especially is true with LEDs. More is always more. We're going to be exploring how to wire them in series, how to wire them in parallel, and how to pick the best LED design that is going to make your project shine. How do you like that? illuminating, shine. I know a lot of these wiring LED videos use breadboards. If you've never worked with a breadboard, it can be a little confusing to see how the circuit works. So we are just going to be tying some wire together and hope for the best. If you're getting started with LEDs, I always recommend getting an assortment pack. LEDs come in a whole bunch of different colors, but these are by far the most popular. You're going to get your reds, the yellows, the blues, the greens, and the whites. This kit has the five millimeter ones, which is your standard. Every hobbyist knows our five millimeter LED, and that's just the diameter of the casing. You can compare this to a little three millimeter LED and you can see how tiny that is. So obviously this one appears much more brighter than this guy. They also have 10 millimeter, eight millimeter, but you have to be careful with those because you just assume that they're going to be brighter, but not always because oftentimes it is just a five millimeter with a bigger casing around it. You have your diffuse ones, which are the colored ones, and then you have clear ones. And clear ones can also be a variety of different colors. You don't know what color it is until you light it up, but this one's white, so I know this color. Each color, interestingly, has its own range of operating voltage. This is the voltage range that it needs to even light up. So if you give it something less than this, it won't even light up. If you give it more, well, then it's going to burn out. Then you're going for a smoke effect, which is like a totally different workshop. Before working with any LEDs and circuits, always test your LED. Because even when you get a kit like this, trust me, there's always a dud or more in there. So you want to make sure you don't go through all this wiring and you forgot to check that it works and it's a dud and you got to cut your wiring. So it's always very safe to test these things on a three volt coin battery without a resistor. And unlike a lot of components, the polarity doesn't mess up your LED. Meaning say you mess up and you accidentally hook it up backwards. It's like, oh, did you blow it up? In my case, yeah, I typically blow stuff up, but no, LEDs are pretty resistant. So they don't blow up and you can see it's gone right back to working. And they're always best visible from the top. These diffuse cases help diffuse the light to the side. But if you buy the clear type, they are much more bright at the top than they are on the side there. The positive and the negative kind of look the same. Like, how, how do you know which one's positive and negative? So I have like a close one. And I'll tell you my chief uh, way of knowing is you can see the legs. One is longer than the other. So the positive is always the long leg and it's called the anode. And the cathode is the short leg and that's always your negative. Now, the other secret way you can tell and don't feel bad if you can't tell because I can't tell. You have a rim that goes around the epoxy casing. On the negative side, the rim stops. There's a flat spot on it. Sometimes you can feel it. I don't see no flat spot. So if you don't see a flat spot, don't worry about it. In a series connection, the power flows from positive to negative through each LED. So the LEDs are basically aligned in a row and the power just kind of travels through them that way. With the voltage, you have to add up the forward voltage. That's the voltage that you know you need for your power supply. And because they're all sharing this power supply, the same current is going to flow through all LEDs. And your average LED consumes 20 milliamps of current. So 0 0.02 amps. The voltage is different for each color. So we have that information on the lid of my box. And for resistors, you only need one resistor. So it's really simple. It's it's less components. That's why a lot of people like series connections. But as we shall see, it also has its disadvantages. Typically, you're going to see circuits the way it appears on your left with the circuit on the anode side, the positive side of the LEDs. On the right, I've also seen circuits hooked up this way. And this is equally correct. You know, some people put the resistor on the positive side. Some put it on the negative side. It does not matter. How do we know what value resistor that we need for a LED circuit? 
The traditional Ohm's law, you can see pictured up top, V equals IR, but you can rearrange this equation to calculate for different things. That second equation is the one that we are particularly interested in and the one that we're going to be using. We want to hook up four red LEDs, and this totally explains why my red cubbyhole is totally empty, because I'm using them all for these diagrams. That's a total of eight volts, so the nine volt battery will definitely do. And because they are all on the same path, each LED consumes two amps. So long as your power supply can provide eight volts and 0.02 amps, all four of these LEDs are gonna light up. There's an extra volt to contend with. Nine volt power supply, we're only consuming eight. There's just kind of one extra volt here floating around, so we need to consume it somehow. We're gonna take our Ohm's law formula where we take the difference of the power source, which is generally more than what our LEDs need. So nine minus eight is one, and then you divide that by 0 0.02, that resistor has to be 50 ohms, and it'll cover all those LEDs. Very rarely, the resistor that you calculate is gonna be just available off the shelf. So in those cases, you can either take smaller resistors and combine them in series to make the exact amount, which I don't recommend, or just bump up to the next common value. And I always prefer to bump up because then you're kind of playing it safe. The power will come in from the battery. It's gonna hit this 68 ohm resistor because that's kind of like the natural one step up from the 50 ohm resistor. The higher you go with the resistance, the dimmer these will glow. So I try and stick as close, but a little over as possible. It goes in through the positive leg of the first one, goes, lights the LED, comes back down, goes through the negative leg, then goes to the, because it always flows from positive to negative, positive leg of next one, up and over, light that sucker right there. And then when he comes back out, this goes to the negative of the battery. So I kind of color coded the wires, you know, just to, to help us out here. And let's see how this thing lights up. So all I'm gonna do is hold these connections with my bare hands. All right, and we're getting a nice even glow, no funkiness, right? So we calculated the correct resistor value because everything seems to be on, you know, and not frying out. Now, pros and cons of series. The nice thing about series is that it requires very little current. The big drawback to series, there's two of them. The fact that you're adding the voltage. So we have nice four LEDs here. We can power it with a nine volt battery. That's great. But what if you wanna do like 20 LEDs or something like that? Well, now that's two times 20, that's 40 volts. So your volt requirements start to really escalate, you know, unless you start to separate out your LED circuit into multiple circuits and kind of power them separately. The other big disadvantage is because the LEDs are all on the same path, if this one blows out, the whole circuit stops working. If you pick the correct resistor, LEDs last a very long time. So they're pretty secure circuits. So I don't want to make you think that, oh, I should always stay away from series because the whole thing could go down. They're very, very reliable if you got your resistor situation figured out, you know, along with your power supply. With a parallel circuit, each LED has its own path directly to the power source. So if its buddy decides like it's going to take Friday off, well, the rest of the LEDs can continue working. Just like you had to add up the voltages for a series, well, here it's opposite. You have to add up all of the currents. Well, the good news about LEDs is that they draw very little current, so 0 0.02 per LED. You can add more LEDs. Well, now you're gonna have to have one resistor per LED because that LED has a direct path to the power source, so it's gonna need its own resistor. It's wired up a little bit differently. And again, I gave you an example where the resistors are connected to the positive side and the resistors are connected to the negative side. And the first thing you're gonna notice here is the battery size. So we went from a nine volt now to two double eight batteries. And that's because we're not adding up all that voltage anymore. Instead, we are adding up the current. How does one calculate the little resistors on these LEDs right here? It's much like we already did. So you know you need a total of 
two volts because each LED is independently tapping into that power source and taking their little two volts. So as long as it provides two volts, that's great. We got three volts, so we went a little bit over. But here we have to add up the current. So 0 0.02 multiplied by four is 0 0.08. So the only reason we add up all the current is that you wanna make sure that your power supply can supply that current. So say we had like, hundreds of LEDs added or, you know, many, many more LEDs, something that's beyond the two double A's, then you know you're going to need a beefier power supply. How do you calculate the resistance? Well, it's the same thing. You take the power source, which is three, you minus out the voltage that's going to be consumed, which is your two volts, and you're left with one volt. Well, we got to do something with that extra volt. So you divide it by 0 0.02. Now, why 0 0.02 and not 0 0.08? Because that's like the total of what you need. Because each LED is individually connected to the power source. So you almost treat each LED as if a individual, like you're, you're wiring up four single LED circuits is kind of the way you think about it. So always remember to calculate that current for the one LED. And so that's, we come back up again with that 50 ohms. And since we don't have a 50 ohms right out of the box, we'll choose the 68 ohms. These are two wired in parallel. And this is just kind of another example of how to do it before we get to my rat's nest. And you can see definitely where the anodes are because I have resistors next to the anodes. And rather than putting wires on the resistors, I just twisted the resistors together because I, on purpose, needed these eyes to be real close together, like spider eyes. I just left the insulation off here so you guys can see how then this is wound to the positive wire. I wonder if these glow green, and that's why I use a uh, green wire. We're, we'll soon find out. And you can see the two negatives bound together and then going to a master wire. Each positive of the LEDs is tapping into a master positive wire, let's say. And same thing for the negative. Now, how long the master wire is, how long each little tap is, is really up to your design. I like to keep the forks really close to the LED. So that way in your prop, you're only sending two master lines down to the battery wherever you have your battery hidden. If you try and connect each LED, say you have eight of them, now you're going to have eight positive wires, eight, you know, it just helps to conserve wires. So I try and make the connection as close as possible after positioning this, you know, and getting this kind of measured out in position. I'm going to use a coin battery here just to kind of quickly see what the heck is going on, positive and negative. Oh, and these are flickering red LEDs here. You can get them solid like we have. You can get them flickering. You can get them flashing. You can even get them multicolor. But, you know, we all get started with the standard five colors. Here is the thing that looks not at all like the picture, but it's really no different than what I got going on right here if we just kind of pull this apart a little bit. You can see the positives coming from the anodes of the LEDs. And I kind of wired these all close together just so they kind of appear on the same a screen there and I'll just hold it like this. So you see all the positives and as quickly as possible, I like to just join them all. So that way you have a master trunk and same thing with the negatives. I just join them all into the master trunk. Now, if you need these to be real close together, like say you have a scanner effect going on, you may just be able to tie these via the resistors exactly as I did here and just bag these intermediary wires and perhaps even bag these. If these need to be so close together, sometimes you can tie all the negative leads together. This is gonna look wildly different depending on what your design is. So let's see if we can light this thing like we did the other one. And the trick here is because it doesn't have any of its insulation is not to allow the positives and negatives to touch that are non-insulated. So something like this might, might work. So I'm gonna use two double A's. It's nice, steady. All of them are evenly lit up. If one of them just falters, the rest of them will continue to light up. Big advantage of the parallel is that we were able to do this with two double A batteries versus the nine volt to power the same amount in series. Say your LED installation gets to be so big and you need one amp, three amps, you know, something like that. Well, you can always switch to a wall wart. 
I love the dial. You can set it to six volts, four volts, however your LEDs need if you have it series parallel. But this is also a three amp if my eyes don't deceive me, this is a three amp. So you can connect a decent amount of LEDs to something like this using the proper resistors and then plug it into your lighting display. And I always like to use a female adapter like this because then you can just connect your positives and negatives to the female adapter and plug it in. And then you have something that lasts a little bit longer. What if one of these got busted and I am just gonna pull this guy out of his circuit? Will the circuit work? Yep, so your three will continue powering on and making your prop awesome while that guy takes a nap. The best way to hook up a multicolor situation is in some kind of parallel situation because you can account for the voltages and each LED has its own resistor. If you're trying to hook all of these up in series, well, that blue, it needs more volts. It needs like 3.3 volts and green. I don't know why I have 2.5 volts. That thing needs at least three volts, but I think I was trying to get a nice range of numbers. The blue LED is gonna require so much more than say the red. And so the red could run the danger of getting burned out. Out. So it's best to do multiple colors in a parallel wiring. So let's see if we poof anything. I'm gonna connect with the battery, positive to positive, negative to negative. And we got everything lighting up. Let's say we were to light it up with the three volt. All the LEDs look much, much dimmer because that blue is basically like, I, I need, you know, I need more, more juice. We've talked about series, we've talked about parallel, but it turns out you can combo them and this gives you even more power. You know, so say you want to do like a whole bunch of blue ones, a whole bunch of yellow ones, and maybe some red ones. So here's another idea that you can explore. And these are the series parallel circuits. Each row is hooked up in series. Each row has its resistor. You can either put it on the positive or the negative. How does one calculate a resistor for this situation now. For each branch, we're gonna require eight volts, but because they are wired in series, they're only gonna consume 0.02 amps. And same thing with the other branch. So in terms of power, because each eight volt branch is taking power independently from the power source, directly from the power source, a nine volt is gonna be enough to power each eight volt branch. And now it also needs to be able to deliver a total of 0 0.04 amps. That's not a problem for the nine volt. So we're gonna put that 0 0.04 aside and look at the equation for getting that little resistor. And you'll notice it's exactly like calculating a resistor for a series circuit. So it's the nine minus eight, because it's going to require eight for all four. And that's going to give you that 50 ohm resistor again. You can also use this for your multicolor. So long as no branch exceeds nine volts, you're good to go. Keep adding LEDs. For the red LEDs, you can add up to four if you're going to use a nine volt battery. For the blue LEDs, two is the best. I've gotten away with three, like just saying two is like the textbook, you know, amount. And then same thing with the greens, probably two is better, but sometimes you can get away with three. And calculating the resistors is exactly like calculating them in series. So let's see if we can hook up like kind of a colorful series parallel circuit. So we have a red here in series. And I got four of them, just like the, the design. If we're gonna use a nine volt battery, two, four, six, eight, it should be able to power this. Oh, I'm gonna go for it. Three, let's go for it, see what happens. And three of these. What we're gonna do is now connect all the negatives together and they each have their own way of getting to the power source. And let's do the same here. Let's connect all these up positives all the positives, all the negatives, like all the good vibes are over here, all the bad vibes are over here. So let's see what this mess looks like. I'm going to use alligator clips for this. So I'm gonna kind of just get these guys here like that. And I'm going to connect this side over here with this alligator clip. We're gonna just make sure that each branch is kind of their own thing and not touching, like metal on metal touching. I have a nine volt 
and I'm going to clip the negative on this negative terminal. And off camera, I'm going to clip the positive one so I don't move, oh, just like I just did, move the circuit around like that. So let me just do one more adjust. This is me trying to not use the breadboard. <laughs> All right, so I think nothing's touching. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp the red and we can see, ooh, it worked. And they look decently bright. We know how to wire one LED to a battery, two LEDs, three LEDs, and now we can do them in series, in parallel, and freakishly combine them to series parallel type circuits. Oh yeah, so we can make some freaky circuits. I'd love to see what you're working on. If you came up with a really cool LED design, I would love to see it. And heck, I love seeing the spaghetti wiring behind the scenes that goes into it. And as you guys know, this is shot live for community members. So if you haven't joined up, I encourage you to join the engineering artist community. Link for that is below. And inevitably we get to chatting because it's live and it's fun and I forget to mention something, or I call a red LED a blue LED. All of those mistakes and cool things that I think of where I'm like, I cannot believe that I did not cover that. That's all gonna be in the tutorial in the link below, along with every diagram that you've seen so you can follow along the prettier wiring than which you saw here. All right, guys, I had an amazing night, so go out, Make your project shine and I will catch you the next time. Bye.